Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson, we are looking at the domain and range of polynomial functions. So, we are going to spend some time and we will examine the domain and range of linear, quadratic and cubic functions, as well as we will discuss the end behavior of even and odd functions in general. Before we do that, we need to remind ourselves what we mean by domain and range. The domain of a function f of x are those values that we can put in the function or the values that the function can, can accept. The range of a function, on the other hand, are those values that the function gives back after acting on the domain values. The range is sometimes called the codomain. So in functions, we have two sets. We have our x set and we have our y set. The x set is the domain and the y set is the range. Now, as long as the function can accept the value, they go here into the domain and the function acts on them, does something to it, and gives us another value over here, which we call the range. And this is pretty much how domain and range, work, domain and range works. Now, all polynomial functions will have a domain of x in R. That is, all x in the set of real numbers can be are usually the domain of um, polynomial functions that include linear functions. So for this function, y equal to 5 minus x, and this one, y equal to x minus 3, the domain for both of them is all x in the set of real numbers. Now let's look at what happens as x tends to the negative side. As we go further negative, look at this function here, as x tends goes further negative, then notice that the y values keep getting larger and larger. As x heads into the positive direction, notice that the, the y values are getting smaller and smaller. And so this tells us that the range, let me should I, I should just write it up here. Um, so let's start by writing domain and range. So the domain, as we said before, is all x in the set of real numbers. Because every, every x in the set of real numbers that you put into this function, or this one, is going to give you back a value. And because of that, the range is going to be all y numbers in the set of real numbers. Remember, the set of real numbers are all the numbers that we use to do stuff. <clears throat> all right, so the domain will be that, and the range will be that. For the same thing for the other one, even though they have different coefficients, notice the the negative coefficient here and the positive coefficient here, it will still have a domain of all x in R and the range will be all y in the set of real numbers. Um, polynomial functions are not limited to um, the domain. We can put any number in there and that is why we say all x in the set of real numbers for the domain. For quadratic functions though, even though the domain is all x in R, that is all x in the set of real numbers, the range has a limitation. So let's write that first, domain and range, and then we discuss it. So here, the domain for this function, this pink one here, it has a y equal negative ax squared. And so it ends up with a maximum value. You can see here that this maximum value is 5. So the function climbs, reaches 5, and then turns back. So the domain will be all x in the set of real numbers. The range, though, is going to be limited because of this maximum. Even functions in general tend to have some form of absolute maximum or absolute minimum, while Odd functions don't have that limitation. So even functions have a limitation in, in, in the maximum or minimum, and odd functions don't. So these are quadratic functions. They are even because the, you know that for y equals ax squared, the 2 is an even number, and therefore the quadratic function is an even function. So it will have a domain of all x in R, but the range is going to be limited because of the maximum here where the case is. Um, where you have a y equal negative ax squared. So the range is going to be limited by this. So the range here is going to be all the numbers starting at pos positive 5 in this case and heading downward. So we're going to say all y numbers that are less than or equal to our maximum, whatever the maximum is. 
In the case for a positive AX square, then this graph you notice has a minimum value. And notice the minimum value, minimum value here. Because it has a positive AX square, it has a minimum. And therefore, though it has a domain of all X in R, its range will be limited because of the minimum value. So its range is going to be all Y that are greater than the minimum. And so you can look at, we can look at specific examples of um, quadratic functions where we can work out the domain and range. Usually, when a question is given, the domain for that question is given. But sometimes... Um, when you just look at it for what it is, this quadratic function could go onward forever and ever in both directions. It's just that um, the range is going to be limited in terms of the minimum here or the maximum. And remember, minimum and maximum depends on the sign of the leading coefficient of the x square. All right, so let's look at some specific examples. Here we have two examples. f of x is equal to x square plus 4x plus 1 and f of x is equal to 5 minus 2x squared plus 3x. So this one has a positive x squared, meaning that it's going to be curved like this. And this one has a negative x squared, which means that it's going to be curved like that one. So this one has a minimum, and this one has a maximum. So the domain, as we mentioned before, it's a polynomial function. So the domain is going to be all x, in the set of real numbers. The range, though, we'd have to work that out and find out what that minimum is. We can find the minimum by using the formula c minus b square over 4a. And our value c here is 1. So it's 1 minus b square, which is 4 square, over 4 times a, 4 times 1. And this gives us 1 minus 16 over 4, which is 1 minus 4, and that is equal to negative 3. So this um, function will have a minimum of negative 3, and so the range is going to be all y values that are greater than or equal to negative 3. So while the domain is all x in R, the range is going to be all y greater than negative 3 greater than or equal to negative 3. For this one, f of x is equal to 5 minus 2x squared plus 3x. We know that it has a maximum. So the domain is still all x in R, all x in the set of real numbers, but the range, we'll have to work it out. So the range is going to be, work it out the same way here, c minus b squared over 4a, which gives us, um, c is 5 minus b squared, b is 3. So 3 squared divided by 4 times a, which is 4 times negative 2. And that gives us 5 minus 9 over negative 8 which means 5 plus 9 over 8, and of course that is 6 and 1 over 8. So our range, remember it's a maximum, so it's not going to pass this. So our range is all y, all y less than or equal to 6 and 1 over 8. So our domain for this um, quadratic function, it's even, this quadratic function is all y less than or equal to 6 and 1, 8, while the domain will be true for um, all x in R. Let's look at a question with a very specific um, domain. Sometimes when you get a question to analyze because the examiner wants you to look at a specific domain, then they give you a specific domain um, because we cannot possibly draw it with an infinite domain. So um, here we have f of x is equal to x to the third plus 1, and g of x is x plus 5 for all x in R. First thing we need to do is to write down the composite function or the composition of g of f of x. Let's do that. g of f of x. Now, um, first we need to write down g of x. So g of x is equal to x plus 5, and now we're going to substitute 
f of x into it and say g of f of x is going to be equal to um, x to the third plus 1 or x cubed plus 1 and then plus 5. So we, re we replace this. And so our g of f of x is equal to x cubed plus 6. So now remember that this function had a limited domain. Its true domain is all x in R. Um, but for this question, it has a limited domain of um, 0 to 3. And so we want to look at how it works out. Now let's look at how it would work here. So let's draw some... some Value said, um, said, so you can see it. So this is our x, this is our f of x, and this is our g of x. Remember, f of x is put into g of x. And the values are from 0 to 3. So let's just call it that, 0 to 3. Now, when we put 0 into f of x, what happens is here that we're going to get 0 cubed plus 1, which is just 1. And when we put 3 into f of x, we have 3 to the third, which is 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27 plus 1, that gives us 28. Now, f of x now, this is our range for f of x. So our range for f of x would be from 1 to 28. But this f of x now becomes the domain for g of x, which means that we're going to plug these numbers into g of x. Do you remember, do you remember g of x says x plus 5? So here we're going to plus 5. No, um, whatever, x is plus 5, and this was x cubed plus 1. So we're going to take this and add 5, and that becomes 1 plus 5 is 6, and 28 plus 5 is... 33. So looking at this function, we can see that the range, part B, the range for g of f of x is going to be from all y between five, between 6 and um, 33. Now we could use the composite function to do that by simply saying, what is g of f of x of 0? So g of f of x of 0 is going to be 0 cubed plus 6, and that gives us 6. And then go to the other end and say g of f of um, 3, and that would be 3 to the third plus 6, and that, of course, is 27. Um, where, yes, 27 plus 6. And 27 plus 6 here is 33. And so we could use do it that way. And then, of course, we could write down our domain of 6 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 33. So using this, this is our range. Using this specific domain, then this is what our range would be. The range for this function is all x in r, all y in r. Given this specific domain, however, once we use this, then we have to write down a specific range. So a specific domain will have a specific range and that you can work out depending on the question that you're using. Let's look at this other function. Notice that we have here, we have two cubic functions this time. And of course, cubic functions are odd. It's odd because, of course, you have a x to the third and the third there is an odd number. And this one, is a minus ax, minus um, x to the third, and this other one is a positive x to the third. Now notice what happens again as x starts from, as, you, as using this function, the positive x cube. As x heads in the positive direction, notice that the number keeps getting bigger and bigger. And as x heads in the negative direction, notice that the number keeps getting smaller and smaller. Same thing for the other function, just that it starts out in a different place. And especially because it's a polynomial function, then its domain is going to be all x in the set of real numbers, and its range is going to be all y in the set of um, real numbers. So for polynomial functions in general, the... Domain is all x in R and the range is all x in R.
if we are looking at specific cases, like in this one, where a specific range domain is given, then we can work out this specific range. So add functions in general do not have a restriction when it comes to the domain and the range. But even functions, because um, even functions will have some form of um, um, maximum or some form of minimum. Um, some for, they will always have some form of maximum or minimum when it comes to even functions. But with odd functions, it's generally some form of line. And because it's a line, there is no real limitation on, in terms of absolute minimum or absolute maximum. The even functions will have an absolute minimum or maximum, as you saw with the quadratic um, functions. So the range will be limited by some maximum or minimum. In the odd functions, there will be no such limitation. It will just be x in r and y in r. And of course, remember that your question will often give you a specific um, domain to work with. And if it gives you a speci specific domain to work with, then you have to use that specific domain to calculate what your range will be. In general, there are no limitations because they are polynomial functions. So their domain is always x in r and all y in r, except when it comes to the even ones, when you know that there will be some, some um, absolute maximum or minimum, so your range is going to be affected in those cases. That's it for now. Remember to keep practicing, and of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do before you go. Thank you for watching, and thank you always for your support.